I'm just kidding. I'm so thrilled to be able to give you guys a first look at this brand new Lego theme, Lego Animal Crossing. To say I was excited was an understatement. And then as far as the build process goes, it was like literally beyond anything I could have dreamed of. And I know it sounds like I'm exaggerating, but prepare for me to be like a little bit obnoxious because I just could not believe as I was building these sets, how cool they were. Part of me is like really offended that they all say like six plus and seven plus. These were made for me. All jokes aside, if you've been a fan of Animal Crossing at any stage in your life, you will enjoy these sets and I can't wait to go into detail with you about why. Thank you so much to the Lego group for sending these sets over to me for review. All thoughts and opinions are my own. This first Animal Crossing wave is five sets, varying in their own ways, but keeping to like a certain theme. For one, I noted that they all say customizable on the back, which is very important at Animal Crossing, right? The ability to customize and change things around. Another thing I wanted to note, I kept hearing people saying, oh, this is just Fabuland 2.0. And while I see, yeah, the different head molds are like large heads, it's not a regular minifigure head, I see see that there's a similarity there. I think it's unfair to compare them just because of that. The Animal Crossing figures are based on actual characters from a video game versus Fabuland, which was like its own IP, its own creation. Not to mention the animals look like really weird. The Animal Crossing figs so far literally look exactly like the figure in the video game. So it's not like something new and freaky we're seeing. It's something that already exists. Anywho, let's get into these sets. Julian's birthday party starts off the lineup at the affordable price of $14.99. It is 170 pieces. There are no stickers in this set and I do love that they include like a little cute character page of the character's minifigure that you're getting in the set. But one gripe, I wish there was some kind of like character description. You know, Julian, he's a horse. He's actually like a freaking unicorn. He has a smug personality. You know, all the villagers have like different kinds of personalities. His birthday is March 15th. His catchphrase is glitter. Any of those details would have been like really cute to include on that page. Just the way that they do it sometimes with the Lego Friends mini dolls where they have pictures of each mini doll's face favorite pastimes or their hobbies and things like that. The set is a very basic little build. There's like four little quadrants. It's Julian's birthday. And if you remove this top part, you will actually find a tree branch in it. I've never actually seen pink trees in game. So I don't know if that's just something I missed, if it happened specifically on Julian's birthday. I know, for example, one of my villagers just had a birthday a couple of days ago and her birthday was inside her house and there was cake and she was having a party. I haven't been around for Julian's birthday or I don't know if this is just like a cute little set that they're doing just to be like, oh, it's this village birthday. There is a cake in the middle, which is really cute. There's birthday gifts throughout this setup, but the only one that's like an actual gift that you can open is this purple one. It's being closed by one stud, so you can just like swing it open and there's a star, a little coin, and a microphone if you want to do karaoke. And then I guess he also got like a little skateboard for his birthday. This was the first of the five sets that I built in this wave, so it kind of set the tone a little bit in terms of what to expect in the other sets. One of the things, for example, that you'll start to continue seeing is that the trees open up. The other one is that they all have sort of these quadrant bases and they can be rearranged via these two by four green bricks underneath. Overall, this is a really precious set for $15. And if you're just collecting minifigures, like $15 for this brand new minifigure and this really cool torso is a pretty great deal. I think this is a bargain. The next that I have to show you is Bunny's Outdoor Activities. This set is $19.99 and has 164 pieces. And so somehow, just as I'm saying that, I am realizing this set is smaller than the last one, but it looks bigger, but it's also like $5 more. So I think in my brain, I just thought that this was the bigger set and I was trying to build them from smallest to largest. Bunny's build has some pretty great features, so let's get into them. Firstly, this was one of my first sets that I built that had all paper bags. So all paper bags on the inside and then the mini bags inside of the big bags were also paper. This is the future. There are no stickers here. And here's the cute character page for Bunny, who is the only minifigure in the set as well. Here's Bunny's precious little mold with her plaid green and red and yellow sweater. And she's holding a toasted marshmallow. So here's Here's one of my theories as to why this set is $5 more than the last one. This one introduces terraforming. If you know an Animal Crossing, it kind of takes you a while before you get the ability to terraform, which means you can make ponds, waterfalls, cliffs. This set has all those. There's even a little ladder so you can climb up into the second level. This set includes a spider, which gave me a little bit of PTSD. I just remember <laughs> in Animal Crossing, when you get bit by a spider, you literally have to go to the hospital. I love this little stand here with all the weapons that you can craft. There's a stick that can help you hop over rivers. There's a shovel, there's an ax. 
hooks and there's a net for catching bugs or for swatting the villagers that you want to kick off your island. Speaking of the stick that helps you hop over rivers, you cannot imagine the scream that I let out when I realized there's a part here, a technic part here you can put the stick into so that Bunny can hop over the water. It's so cute. I screamed. That was my first oh my god moment. So Bunny being able to like hop over the river was just like such a nice treat. Now as I mentioned there's no stickers in this set because we get printed tiles. I know it sounds like I was screaming the whole time I was building this but I kind of was. Screamed when I saw this tile of the dig site. You know when you dig for fossils in your island. And there's also a new printed tile for the fossils. We even get weeds. If you notice there's a boulder up here. You could actually lift the boulder and there's a coin underneath. <laughs> just love all the little surprises in here. Obviously, if you lift up this part of the tree, here's a little flower and another tree branch. I love it because you can literally customize what you want to hide in the trees if you want to play around with this set. Up front, you'll see that there is a tent. You can open it up if you want to place Bunny in here. Here's the little radio for her. Close up the tent back up. There's a little fire so that she can sit here roasting her marshmallow. So this set is a little bit easier to customize because it's not all attached the way that Julian's birthday was. So if you want to move the campsite over here, if you wanted to move the water fall to the side. You can do all of that and it's pretty open-ended. 10-10 set here, honestly. Now, this personally was my favorite set in the whole wave and here's the reasons why it's my favorite set. First, it has Marshall. Marshall is my favorite villager. I absolutely love him. Second, Captain's Boat Tour is one of my favorite features of Animal Crossing. It's meant to depict when you use your Nook Miles tickets to go off island and try to find another villager when you have an open plot on your island. Or if you're out looking for like new fruit trees, if you're out looking for new fish, if you're out looking for new flowers, or if you just need to farm the islands of their minerals like the bamboo or the wood or the fish and things like that. Captain's Island Boat Tour is 233 pieces and will bring you up at $29.99. There are no stickers in this set, and while I'm at it, I'm just gonna say there are no stickers in the rest of the set, so I can stop repeating myself. Isn't that awesome? I think I'm starting to learn that I just hate stickers. Here's Captain's character page in the instruction booklet, and here's his minifigure looking super cute, and he gets sunglasses and his little Hawaiian blue torso, and then his hat print in the back. Here is Marshall's little character page. I literally love Marshall so much with his little side eye that I think is just perfectly depicted in this minifigure. His little bushy tail, which is a separate piece, just like they normally are. I am really partial to Marshall. I didn't mean to rhyme. Because he's my all-time favorite villager in Animal Crossing. He's just like so precious and he's so cute and he has like this side eye that makes it look like he's always pissed at you, but he's actually so sweet. Have you ever heard of him singing? It's just like the cutest thing ever. Some set features on the very topmost level over here, there's a boulder and you guessed it, a little treasure in there. I believe these lime green sticks are the bamboo shoots, which is just like crazy cool that they also included these in the sets. I really love the technique that they used for the palm tree. So like it can almost be like it's swooshing in the air, you know, from the wind and the islands. And the technique that they use to hang the coconuts from the palm trees. There's even like a little sandwich here in between the two lounging chairs. Everything is just so precious. And also remember what I said that these sets, as they get bigger, they kind of build on each other. Like for the first time in these sets, we finally see a crafting table in the form of this log. And as you can see, there is a printed tile, which is the DIY recipe. There's a little shovel next to it. Here's a little oyster shell creature thingy. You have these white pieces that are supposed to be like sea foam crashing against the beach, a little fishing rod, a little fire. It's just like the, I can't, I can't get over how cute this is. And then I noticed like way at the end of building that this is supposed to be the dock. So you can have Marshall standing here and you can dock Captain's boat over here. Captain's boat actually has a little tile of KK's album. Just everything about this set is really precious. And this is my favorite set of the wave, mainly because of Marshall. And next we have Isabel's house visit. This set is 389 pieces and will retail for $39.99. Now we are getting into some more actual house see things. So as I mentioned before, every one of these sets is customizable in terms of you can move all of the quadrants around, but this one is an actual villager's house and you can rearrange all of the furniture inside of it. First up, here's Isabel's character page. I love Isabel. She's just like the cutest, precious little pooch. She gets a little flower in her hair and then the green torso in her nook uniform. And here is Fauna's character page. Fauna is a deer, a fawn if you will. So she's wearing her little fur lined jacket and she has the hoodie, very precious. And they gave her a little basket so she can be like picking flowers or vegetables or something. I'm just honestly so thrilled with how cool these minifigures look. Continuing on to, like I said, building on the previous set. Now, instead of a crafting table stump, we get an actual full little craft station. If you know, like they get more advanced as you go and they can look nicer and more aesthetic to fit with your theme. Something I loved with this set is they gave you two options for windowsill customization. I 
opted to have the blue ones on there, but you can easily pop them on and off since they're just sitting on four studs and then replace it with the brown ones. Now I wonder if they make more waves, how many more window sills we'll get, how many other options in these houses will be customizable. And then you can just collect it and have like, I don't know, a collection of 10 doors and 10 window sills kind of thing and then swap them around sets. I'm here for it. I'm really here for this idea. Honestly, I'm sure you could tell by now that I picked up my Animal Crossing game after one year and two months. Yes, every single one of my villagers was kind enough to remind me that it's been one year and two months. Because these sets just made me feel so inspired to go back to my island and like decorate and like make cliffs and waterfalls and redecorate the outside of my house. It's been a lot of fun creatively. So, okay, back to this build. For the house itself, the roof to me left a lot to be desired. It was kind of just on two flat long tiles. I almost want to try something out myself where I use the one by one bread loaf pieces. I do really love the door piece that they use. It's very much exactly like the doors that you see in the Animal Crossing game. And so another way that this set builds on on the last set is that now you get to decorate and customize the entire inside of a villager's house. It's obviously a highlight in Animal Crossing, right? That you get to have your own house. You get to like try and mix and match your furniture. You get to try and, I don't know, make it your dream home and have like a mermaid themed room. I love that the instructions page actually, what it has you do is it just has you make like the little stove, the little kitchenette, the little flower pot. It has you make the bed and it has you make the table. And it doesn't exactly tell you, hey, this is where these things should go. It gives you a few examples of where the things could go. And then you can just do whatever you want. I almost feel like this really encourages mock building and creativity, you know? It's just like, hey, I could just get rid of this whole tea table and make my own table and then put it in here. This set also has a printed tile dig site, a printed tile fossil. I'm just so excited to have like a bunch of those. Don't forget somebody lost their diary. And something else that this set has that the other ones haven't, a floating balloon present. So cute. Obviously there's a gift inside. Uh, is this supposed to be like a painting kit? I don't really know. I kind of want to use one of those curved sticks that hang out of the Avengers Towers and then have the present floating somehow that way. So I'll see if I can alter it to do that. We take a peek inside this apple tree. There is a coin in here. I love the flowers. I really also love that they put like a tiny little vegetable garden patch. That was probably one of my favorite upgrades in the game was when you could start planting and growing your own vegetables and then cooking with them in the kitchen. Anyways, I don't know. What can I say, guys? This is another 1010 set. This is incredible. Oh my God, there's even a letter in the mailbox. Okay, let's move on. We are down to the final set on this wave and arguably the one that people were most looking forward to. The iconic Nook's Cranny, which they also included Rosie's house in this set. Now this set comes with two booklets so you can build with a friend if you want to, but I am selfish, so I built this by myself. First, I built Rosie's house. Here is Rosie's character booklet. She's got her little checkered pink pattern and she's got a yellow bow on her head. It's just really precious. Look at her tail. And this is Mr. Tom Nook himself, his character page. Here's Tom Nook's torso. I love it. I'm just still in awe at how awesome it is that they made all new characters and all new torsos for this theme. I really hope they continue it. Here's his little bushy tail. This is the only set of the five that came with a brick separator. I don't know if you care about something like that, but I thought that was kind of weird because I did need the brick separator at one point. Rosie's house has an orange tree outside of it. It's just really cute. I love that we're getting all these different trees in them too. It has a tree branch inside of it. Rosie's house also has interchangeable windowsills. And because I like color, I went with the pink square ones instead of the round brown ones. The landscaping outside her house is really cute. We have again that Animal Crossing door, a very similar style roof that I'm not really fond of, but you know, it gets the job done, right? She has a little cute tea party set up outside and then some landscaping. Over on the inside, we had a very similar setup to Fauna's house where we built all of the things. So we built a bed, we built a little couch, we built a lamp, and then it kind of gives you some ideas with how you can arrange it. I don't think I went with any of the ones that I recommended for this one because I was like, I want to have some space in the middle. But one of my favorite details is the KK bubblegum tile. Everybody loves KK. Now over to Nook's Cranny. I think this is why everybody's excited. I can see people buying two of this set. I'm going to be buying another set of this because I want to modularize all of the villager houses and the Nook's Cranny. Again, there's no stickers in any of these sets, but the Nook's Cranny tile. Why doesn't it say Nook's Nook's Cranny. I wouldn't have even been upset if this was the one sticker we got that it said Nook's Cranny on it. It's like, why couldn't it say Nook's Cranny? Obviously, you know what it is. You know the color scheme. It just is iconic to see the lettering on the building for me. That's all. That's probably my one biggest gripe with this entire wave. My second biggest gripe with this entire wave, there is exactly one Bell's bag in this entire set, in this entire wave. I need Tom Nook to be like 
buried in Bell's bags. I need enough Bell's bags to have a whole house full of Bell bags on the ground. Like I need a hundred of these. All right, so let's look at the inside of Nook's Cranny. There is a window display with a guitar and a pail. And then on like the showcase, I guess there is a radio and a flower pot. I love this little fridge because again, it has printed tiles for like the fish food when you're going fishing for some seeds, if that's what you want. And then a DIY recipe, if that's what you're gonna buy. A little bare bones on the inside, which is part of the reason why I wanna buy a second one to make this bigger and make it meatier on the inside. The outside, it does look pretty iconic. There's the bulletin board, there's the overnight drop box. Can you open it? Oh my God, there's a carrot in there. And apparently Rosie did something right in her life that she happened to be right next door to Nook's Cranny. Obviously you can rearrange these. What I plan to do actually is make my own little Animal Crossing town because I freaking can with all of these sets. And I'm so excited to show you guys what I come up with. Probably won't have Rosie being Nook's Cranny's neighbor. I really wanna make an Able Sisters. I wanna make a town hall. I'm just, I'm so excited. I'm gonna try to be super patient and wait for another wave. Hopefully we'll get more awesome villagers houses and more iconic buildings and more iconic characters. I know that's a lot of people who want to see Timmy and Tommy. I personally want to see a Brewster. I love Brewster. He is the barista in the coffee shop. Anyways, to wrap things up here, I really think this wave has a lot of potential. I think it is a great first wave and I'm really curious to know what you guys think about it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear them.